Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the workshop. Sorry, I'm laughing because I've got these two monkeys in the background. So, <laughs> Ten seconds before we go live, they start fighting. Like, Mum and Dad are fighting again. I'll bring them in. They know who I am, who I've got today. I've got Pete helping me out, and I've got Mr. Hi, Mike Waltz helping me out. Good afternoon, everybody. I had to bring Mike in because I'm doing a couplet. And he's uh, another re Ladies and gentlemen, the reader he brought me in, nobody else was free, so he desperated. <laughs> Desperation stakes, he asked me, and I happened to be doing... <laughs> he tried the other set members, what he's actually yeah. got, and he ended up with Mike. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's the one. They're going to be looking after you today. Um, now, what I'm going to do, literally, never done it before. Never. Never practiced it, never tried it. This is the conceptual idea in my head. <laughs> so anything could happen I promise you and if it looks like it could take it I might even colour it black and yellow <laughs> not black and yellow Ruby's in the chat she'll tell you off hi Ruby <laughs> right so what am I doing right I'm going to do a three part goblet <laughs> um the three-part goblet is going to consist of this part for the cup, this part for the base, and oh, Lord help me, I don't know why I'm doing this, this part for the stem. Can't hear you, Mike. That part for Sorry. the stem. Oh, I'm back. It's all right. It's okay. So that's, that's the center stem of a wine glass, cut at each end. The top part that goes into the cup is 13 mil and the bottom part is 10 mil. So I'll round this down and we'll start with the cup and see where we go from there. So quite frankly, anything could happen today. While he's doing that, I'll just go through the chat, see who's in. First in was Jim Matthew, followed by Clint Wood Dancers, and then me, and then Wayne the Wood Turner, Mark, Ruby Claire, Gary Right, Clark, down to zero. Sorry, Pete. Brian with a Y. Todd of Glen Cove. Greg Alexander. Roger Kent, Terry Bartlett, Robert Hodgepodge, Woodbury by Colin, I think that's it so far. Welcome everybody. Yeah, welcome along. Thank you for joining. Brian's out making hay today, so uh, not standing in. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't do a live yesterday, folks, but that was rough as dogs. Don't know what it was. It's a uh, bug of some sort. Now, this wood, I think. Oh, we've got some more in. Could Eric Winkler, Jewish Shed. It was in the scrap bin from Terry, Terry Bray. It's either a dick bow or a rogue It feels oily. Now, do I put ten in on both ends? Because I need to drill this. Or do I do the cup and then drill the bottom? afterwards by holding the cup in the jaws. I would um, drill it first, yeah? I would turn in it, drill it. Turn in both Reverse ends, it. drill it, yeah. Okay. Right, so parting tool.
I'm sure you've got to go this way, Mark, but my suggestion is that you put a tenon on your goblet bowl, hence you drill a hole in the part yeah. of the stem that's going into the goblet and then yeah. uh, a tenon on the what goes yeah, into the base. You can't drill into the stem, can you? <clears throat> that's what no, I just okay. Done, yeah. But what we'll do then is have um <laughs> we'll have we'll have no, two, that, two that, mortises that. then. We'll have two mortises then. Yeah. Oh, I've done a tenon <laughs> on each end. Sure. So that's gonna be the cup end, this'll be the yeah. uh, stem end. So I'll drill the stem now with a thirteen mil drill. Right. But I've got to make sure that when I drill it. Obviously, I don't drill too far, otherwise it'll come through bottom of the goblet. Won't it? Right. Okay. When I hollow the goblet out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I haven't paying much attention to the chat. When I was thinking about who's going to do that one. Um, let's go through it and see what's going on. Right, so that's a 13 mil drill bit. Lays back down as zero ish. About 800, I'll do. Right. So I want to drill the depth of the tenon, which is about that far. And then. See how far I've seen. It's 13 mils in. A little bit maybe, further. Yeah, I think maybe just a little bit. Just give yourself a little bit of room to, because you've got to shake that off, haven't you? Yeah. As Robert has just said, don't get part of the base we cut off when removing the tenon. That's 17 mils in now. Yeah. Stick a pencil line on the outside, just so you know. <laughs> that fits all right. So... That's marked at 17, 17 mil. What length have you got above that, Mark? Hey? What length have you got between there and the top? <clears throat> Ruler, he. Uh, Just over three and a half inches. Yeah. That's or, a bit long for a cup. I would take that hole in a bit further. Just my personal input, but... 90 mil. Go in a bit further? Yeah, because you, you need to have some of that hole there once you've shaped the bottom of the cup, don't you? Um... And with that diameter, you don't want too long a shape unless you're going for a champagne fruit approach. Yeah. Okay. Mike's gone very quiet. Well, Do you think he's helping with the shopping? I think he might be helping with the shopping. He's no, I'm not. Shot. No. Oh, no, I'm not. I didn't want to get involved or Pete was imparting his wisdom. Right, that's, that's 20 mil now. <clears throat> Can you hear me now still, or not? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's all right then. Now then, question is, Pete, do I measure from the end of the tenon or the bottom of the... from the end of the tenon, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. Right. I agreed with Pete. Steady Careful. now. Yeah. Considering you two were fighting 10 minutes ago. <clears throat> Robert said, good idea listening to Pete. If you end up making a fun, I'll blame it on Pete. 
Yeah, that's true. Pete's fault. That, that's why I've stayed quiet. <laughs> right. So that's drilled. Now what we can do, turn it around. You can start hollowing this out. Then Jamie said, why is Mark wearing toy shoes? Toy shoes. It's my safety crocs. Somewhere here in Cornwall. Half inch poker, uh, half inch spindle couch. I'll be back in two seconds. I'm just going to help unload, but not actually put away. So I'll see you in two minutes. All right. The good news from that is that we know that Mike will still be alive tomorrow. Unless he's doing something else wrong, of course. <laughs> now all this is is a 45 degree half inch spindle couch. Stephen Lloyd please has joined us. Good afternoon. Okay, happy with that. I think I'll put a bit of shape on the outside first. So obviously that's where the hole goes to. So I'm just thinking about this. That's where the you hole is. What I was saying now, aren't you? Hey? You're thinking about what I was saying now, aren't you? Yeah, so I need to come in so that the stem starts at that hole, don't I? Yeah, you, you've got to have some of that hole left when you're finished. Yeah. Get your flute angled over better before you start to cut. You get that run back otherwise. Now, one thing we haven't mentioned, which Pete will pick up as I say this. The reason we're doing this goblet is because it's hashtag goblet week. So what this does is it's a challenge set by Steve at SK Crafts, Brian at Hardwood Turning, and Terry Bray from TJ Turning. It's a hashtag every month. Different challenge. To encourage everybody. Yeah, it's basically as the basis Sorry. behind the challenge is to keep it keep it simple, keep it with things that you've probably already got lying around the workshop. So small pieces, off cut type work. Um so nobody's going out and buying big blanks just to do it. Um, and just to, to throw something out there that you give you an idea of what to turn. 
Move over, have you, and when you reach the end of that cup? Yeah. See that? Yeah, that's good. So, um, about once a month, Steve chucks out the challenge. He does it on his Sunday lunchtime live, and he will do it. And then, in theory, Terry covers it on the Monday, um, and Brian on the Monday evening. And then it's just open for about two weeks for you guys to go and make your own version of it. Send a photograph into Steve by email. And Pete always wins. At the end of that two weeks, Steve will make a, makes a little video and he puts all, all the pictures together. And it's just a thing. There's no prizes, there's no competition, it's just a thing. Right, so what I'm going to do now is hollow out the cup. So, let's talk. Change of view. There we go. Nice shape on the cup mark. It's really important to get the tool dead center. You're using a bowl goes there, Mark. Sorry, say again. Are you wearing a bowl goat? Um, are you using a bowl goat? Spindle goat, mate. It is spindle goat. Was it a 3X? Can't hear you, Mike. Right, You're on the wrong microphone again, are you? Hang on. Well, when Paul's got a question, he says, can the goblet be in one piece for the challenge? It can be it can as be many one pieces piece. as you want. Yep. One piece, Hello. several pieces, Hello. scattered across the workshop like Mike does them. Besides a mini goblet with a captive ring, they are quite fun things to, to cut. You can't leave me. It goes on to suggest that if you were to sharpen one end of that glass stem and make the cut removable, it could also function as a nice poking thing. Just trying to see if I can. How's that? That's ah, good. Yeah. Mm, that's okay. Okay. Well, I've uh, been it before, but. Chris Dodds, uh, the Orkenvold. Christoph said, no captive rings, just saying. No, captive rings are illegal and immoral and just plain silly. Then Mark is doing uh, demo work these days so he's setting up a PA so that he can use it to Talk to his audience. Do apologize about the screeching.
If I may just say, Mark, the reason you're getting screeching is that you're um, coming up too quickly at the bottom. You get in the cut, and then you're starting to lift the cutting edge a bit quickly. If you do okay. it a bit slower, you because what you're doing is basically using your edge. No. Come down at the very bottom, virtually come back on level. That's better, yeah. Alright, let's see how far down I am. Oh, actually, Mr. Wayne Clasper in the chat. Still, Who was there, yeah? Wayne, this is just for you, mate. Aha. Overhead. There you go. Different depth gauge. Bit overkill for a couplet. I'm not even going to bother to put an order in for that one because I still haven't got the other one yet. Yeah, well, plenty to go yet. In answer to your question, Chris Dodds, Mike says, was that good day in Welsh? No, the Orkham Valley, thank you very much. Borodar is good day. What's Shamai? It's like, hello, mate. I'm like, Shamai, buddy. Barry's Wood Creations has just joined us. He says he's just popped in to say hi. Oh, can't stay too long. <laughs> You're lucky, Barry. Right. I've been dying to use one of these for a long time. Let's see what this does. What have you got there? Jason Breach. <clears throat> Jason Breach. That's a Henry Taylor tool, I think. Look at it. Oh, that's a bit nice. Don't forget, you still need some of that hole left. Yeah, I know. But I'm like... Um, I don't think you'd need a lot of it because... I'm there. So I want to go probably... Another half inch, maybe. Presumably you yeah, use some flexible glue on the glass. I was, well, for the purpose of this, I was just going to use CA. <laughs> right. Yeah, if you're doing it properly, you probably need something a bit better than that. Yeah, here's a two-part epoxy. Just 
Just an aside, Colin. Uh, yes, I am a Welshman from Cardiff, Colin And I'm in exile at the moment in Bedfordshire and have been for the last 30 odd years. You're going to say, can we make all the questions in the chat Welsh? You might as well make them a double dutch anyway. Exactly. But uh, if that was the case, I couldn't translate because I, I can't speak Welsh anyway. But, um, can't speak English properly, so I'm told. Right. Can you just show us the profile of that tool quickly, Mark? Yeah, so sure. I'm sure. I'm sure the viewers would like to see. Uh, also, let's talk soon. Go to. Right, so. All right, okay. Off. Yep. So, sort of a box scraper with an edge. It's a box scraper with a negative rake, kind of a um, two negative. And it tapers in from the bar, doesn't it? Uh, on yeah. on the top top view, it tapers in a bit. Oh, that's so that's that's the top. As you look down on it. Yeah. So it goes into the tool. And it's got a radius corner. Radius right. corner. Yeah. That's a nice job. I think I shall uh, pinch that for my yeah. sedan. <laughs> which it is I never nice. Use. It does give. I've just got a little knob in the bottom. So I'll just. Uh, it's called a nib. Knob, nib. <laughs> no, the knob's doing the turning. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. That has a very similar grind. Hmm. To get rid of the nib at the bottom, come in just below it and just rock the tool up and down to get rid of the, the little nub, nib, whatever you want to call it. Sticky out bit. Pimple. Pimple. Nipple. Oh, is it nipple on YouTube? But sticky out bit is better than a sticky yeah. end. Yeah. I don't want to play with any more of that depth. Right, so now I can sand. And then we can think about the possibility of colour. God. Do we colour? What? <laughs> so I don't know. I don't think we need to colour. Ruby, he was talking about doing black and yellow. Right. This is a bit where it, you can all talk about me and I won't be able to hear you because I've got to put my dust extraction on. That's why we use these Jabra headsets. It cuts out the background noise nicely. It does. It does indeed. I did say I would t tell on him and uh, let you know, Ruby, so he was warned. These three-part goblets, um, Mike invented these back in the 1700s to um, reassemble the fractured pieces of goblet from around the workshop. And so I did one the other week, inspired by Mike, which uh, used an off-cut of wood that I had knocking around. And they're really quite nice to do. You can play with them, do different types of stem, you can cut different shapes of stem, or use different materials like glass. Which uh, just gives you a little extra dimension. Well, 
And they're, they're a very, a very good um, <clears throat> way of putting, which I've got to do yet. You could do a very delicate bowl with, let's say, um, a burr. And then you can have a, a black stem and then burr on the bottom. So you've got a very nice, delicate one. And you can turn that bowl very thin because you can, you're doing it from one piece of wood as opposed to on the stem of a goblet. It's, it's a great way of doing things, actually. Helen Bailey was the one that inspired me to have a go with them some while ago. As Mike was saying earlier, the best method of his all wood is to put a tenon on the bottom of the goblet. You drill a hole in the top of the stem. Yeah. And you put a tenon on the bottom of the stem and drill a hole or mortise on the base. That's it. That's the best flow of cutting a, a wooden one. Mark's obviously restricted because he's using glass in the middle. Mark's always been restricted though, Pete. True. Right. It's time for the real. Sorry about that. It was a vast improvement to normal, Mark. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm just I'm just being nasty. Oh, okay. Ruby has said no comment to the um, suggestion you might be painting it black and yellow. Why have not? I don't actually think I want to. It's quite a pretty piece of wood. And Robert said, look at that, Mark is throwing a whole package of paper towels back there. He must be rolling in money with all his wood turning. Actually, no, that's just Mark's... Um, I've got to tidy up. Brian might be looking. It's not a bin for throwing out, it's a bin for tidying up. Hiding the mess. No, he means this back of this. I went to a fabulous, fabulous store the other day with Kim. We went to a place called Booker's, which is a big wholesale place. And I saw a huge great pack of kitchen roll and got it at a very good price. So I bought it. It's not bad paper towel actually. Right, so that's uh, that was selling. Amy's got a question for you. Said, "What's your favourite wood to turn?" Mine. Um, for prettiness, you. Um, the other answer would be any wood that makes me money. You for, for its beauty. That's a very mercenary attitude. This, hey. <laughs> well, I'm, shocked. To become popular. <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked. I really There's am. lots of really nice woods to turn, but my favourite is cherry. Not for the finish, yeah. but for the smell while you're turning it. Yeah, and it does cut like butter as well. It does it? cut beautifully. It does polish pretty well, but it smells gorgeous. Yeah, I think the big so, problem with cherry is getting bits that don't crack. <laughs> yeah. That's With the Yorkshire cool. grid on the outside, turn the lathe down to 350, apply it, paper towel, work it in, let the grid do the work. It should take the exterior surface up to approximately 1,000 grid. The main reason for turning the lathe down to 350 is what you're doing is you put it on a semi-liquid Paste. Yeah. You leave it running Splat fast, delivery. you end up wearing it. Yeah. <clears throat> Brian has tuned in from the tractor. Good afternoon, Brian. Don't crash into that tree. Afternoon, Brian. No. Crash into that tree. <laughs> when we went and stayed, when we went and stayed for a few days at Brian's, Brian let Kim go off on the, the ride on mower. There's one tree in the whole field, out in the middle of nowhere. It was the only tree she hit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And yes, I do have it on video. All right, so turn the lathe up, clean piece of paper, and all you're doing now is buffing off the residual wax that was left on the surface. The Apparently, the yeah. Sorry, carry on. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, Brian sent me a package with a sticker in it, which I didn't notice, and I've um, posted the box onto Colin, and he's now got the sticker. So, sorry, Wayne, I'm not going to colour this one, mate. Wayne and I were having a bit of a conversation before we went live. And he was going, black and yellow? And I said, well, maybe. He said, well, I'll have to watch then. Well, the old song, isn't it? Black and yellow and pink and green. <laughs> no, it's nothing like that song. No, actually, nothing like that at all. No, no. no. I sure, that. Okay. Peter Woodwax 22. Uh, I guess I can't find my home machine. It's over there somewhere. Yeah. That's all right, Colin. I'm seeing Brian in a couple of weeks um, and taking over a few departing tool for him, so I'll swap that for another sticker. You keep that one. We're all good. Plays at full speed. Because we're going to Just Ireland. Maybe I hadn't noticed. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Mm. Off, um, you going to Ireland? Yeah, we're going to see uh, Glenn Lucas for a three day course. Oh, yeah. Um, he, yeah, whole crowd of us are going. He's, Mark, a really up, he's a really up and coming <laughs> turn, isn't he, Glenn? Yeah, he's, he's getting there, isn't he? He's, he's <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he's been doing it 25 years. And the rest. He's a, it's a bit slow on the uptake, but uh, give him my fondest regards. Will do. Yeah, looking forward to that. I bet you are. Uh, which one should you go for? The only trouble is I'm flying with Terry and I haven't booked in a disabled um, <laughs> access for him yet. Well, now you can see why I didn't colour that. No, you want to colour that. No. Pretty. No, that is very pretty, I think. Oh, it is. It's gorgeous. What, what is it again? Oh, I'm right. not sure. It's either a Dick Bow or a Hiroko. All right, okay. Terry Bray knows what it is. Came from him. Okay. That doesn't mean a thing. Right. Robert uh, Woodwork says, wait a minute. Is that a Super Pro A sitting on a box on the floor? Have you swapped to a uh, binder? Yes. Go on then. Seeing as Brian told everybody last week <clears> that I have. Yes. I've swapped to... If you'll be able to see it. Yeah. Slow speed grinder, slow speed grinder, CBN wheel, Tormac jigs. That's the Axminster one, isn't it? No, this is from the Simon Hope. Simon Hope one. It's the KS DML mm. 200N. Yeah, so um, it's a, a half 180 grid CBN wheel on. Mm. Just gives, me more versatility. Just gives me more versatility. You are Pete. And I know somebody else who's got one of those. <laughs> I know somebody else who's got one of those too. <clears throat> I know. In fact, I know two people who've got them. Hmm. I'm not sure if the other one's in the chat. I know one is. Right. So now I've got to get Mr. this. Mr. Turning has joined us. Good afternoon. And Rob from Copper Hour. I don't think I noticed you earlier. Hello, Copper, and Hi, hello, Steve. How are you? So, the line, the hole comes up to there. Yeah, you should have so gone deeper with that a... hole then. Hey? You should have gone deeper with that hole then. No, I'm too tired. You should have. <laughs> Where does the hole come up to, Mark? Well, the hole comes up to there. Well, that's no good, is it? <clears throat> well, the only I can thing take you all can... this down. No, you take that down and just make a little bit of a feature. Yeah, make a, a fillet you know, or something. A, yeah, a, a little fillet or a a leg. <laughs> you don't get a leg of fish, do you? Um. Yes, you do actually. 
lobster counts, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's not a fish, though. Well, it's a shellfish. It's an, an, it's an animal. <laughs> no, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just throwing it out there to cause upset. <clears throat> I mean, you get fish fingers, so I can't see why you can't get them. <laughs> yeah. <fish. laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to know what they do with all the thumbs. Good question. Mm. Careful, Mark. I was so interested in the flag. Don't forget, you're an ARPT. Shut up with that. That's <laughs> getting me in trouble, that, Mr. Walt. Yeah. Well, you, you can only blame the person who says it, which is me. So yeah. I, can, I can take the blame. And to be fair... Free Mike speak will get you into that. trouble. That's just standard, really. Pardon? Mike will get you into trouble. It's just standard. It's mm. pretty standard. It's yeah. expected. Right. So if I, where's my thing? The hole I drilled, mm. thirteen mil, was thirteen mil diameter. Pretty sure. So you don't want to take that down any lower than thirteen mil. So oh, fourteen might be better. <laughs> yeah. Is that the end of the hole now, Mark? Where, where the base is? It's in there, yeah. So, if I take a stem down to 16 mil, that's a mil and a half either side, isn't it? Of the hole. Yeah. So I want a bit more than that, so... I, I would tend to go to 18 mil and give yourself a bit of space. You can sand it a little bit from mm. there to... Uh, to so yeah, set my calibers to 18 mil then. Agreed. And that's where I'll go down to. Nope there, Pete. We agreed again. Colin is asking oh. me to be selling the Pro Edge. <clears throat> um, I'm in two minds. This is not yet made. There's advantages and disadvantages to any sharpening system. If you've got the space in your workshop, it's a good thing to have more than one. Robert's suggesting you should do it as a giveaway. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, look, there's a pig just flew past my shop, workshop window. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, if Mike gets to... If Mike gets to 100,000 subscribers, because he's, yeah, yeah, he's, he's only about two and a half away, two and a half thousand away, I think he should give this pro edge away. I'll tell you what, by the time I get to the 100,000, I would honestly think I'll be too old to pick up a gouge. Oh, all right then. If I get to 100,000, I'll give my pro edge away. If I get to 10,000, I'll give Mike's pro edge away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Now, obviously, this is a delicate bit because one slip now and it's, don't forget, there's a hole in the middle there. So uh, oh. you haven't got a lot of timber hold. That's not a solid piece. So you've got the weight of the goblet spinning round. So you're going to have a little bit of twist if you're not careful. See, if this was me, it would have flown already. I don't like keeping people in suspense. No, that's true. You are efficient at throwing goblets. I am. I'm famous for it, of course. Oh, well, infamous. Infamous, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, Roy, I can see your messages. Um, he said, why selling the Pro Edge? Um, we're not selling the Pro Edge at the moment. Mark has now got a CBN as well as the Pro Edge and debating possibly selling the Pro Edge at some point, but not for the moment. And to put people out of their misery, I'm the other one that has got a CBN set up again, but 
uh, more on that in a video later on. But yes. um, I, there to be honest with you, video. sorry, go on. Sorry, I was going to say there is another person in the chat who's recently <laughs> moved over as well. There is, yeah. I, I, I'm, not move, I, I'm not moving over at all. Sorby is an excellent you. system. It is an excellent system, but I'm um, in a position where I'm going to keep both of them because there are some um, shortcomings, let's put it that way, of the Sorby. Yes. Uh, and uh, they are more than adequately compensated by a CPN setup. So. The reason I've moved over is because I couldn't get the grind I wanted on the Sorby. So I moved over to a slow speed grinder with the chicks to enable me to get the grind I, I absolutely mm -hmm. love using. And all the time I'd been using the Sorby, I'd been making a compromise. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Mark. I'm <laughs> Ward Wilson. In that there is a master in the house, are we going to see proper taping techniques? <laughs> I was, actually, Ward, I was considering a doing doing a ten minute um, how to video on on the correct usage and handling of tape. But as Peter said on numerous occasions, all major manufacturers and indeed not major manufacturers have made me sign a ban clause. I'm not allowed to actually video anything to do with uh, masking tape. Which is uh, just as well, really. <clears throat> Which is a worldwide ban. You know, it's not just UK. I, I heard it was universal. Well, no, it's worldwide. Yeah, I, 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 no, no. I, I can, once once they populate Mars <laughs> or the Moon, I can actually show it for there only. Ah, that's right. Yeah, so it won't be long. But as I said, I'll be dead by then, so it'll be a posthumous video. Right. So obviously, when you're doing this at home, if anybody is ever mad enough to try one of these at home, uh. Take your time. Don't rush like I am. I'll stop you there, Mark. To say don't try it, um, I personally think a three-piece gobbler is an excellent way of learning the proportions, etc., without all the scary bits of having to do things when you've got a stem and so on and so forth. So it's, it, it is a good way of doing it. And as Pete says, it's a good way of getting rid of all your split broken flying goblets as well. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's right. One of the things I like best about the three pieces is the fact that you can play with different shapes and combinations. Ex exa exactly. And if they don't work, and the other thing, you can batch turn a load of stems. Yeah. Because as long as you use the same um, tenon size and hole size, mortise size, you can play with a batch of stems, different designs, do a load of bowls, do a load of bases, and you can mix and match and color do what you like with them you know now i'm right I've, I've chosen to do it this way make life hard for myself because quite basically i have boxes and boxes, boxes and boxes and boxes of the bits where i've cut the stem off so i've got stems and bases of glass goblets because i make loads of these they're running between 25 and 50 of these a month so I've got loads of bits left over. So I thought, well, how can I use? <laughs> Robert's asking what, what you use to cut the stems, Mark. Hey? Robert's asking what blade you use to cut the, cut the stems. It's the diamond blade on the Dremel. So it's that one. Do you just cut uh, just so far that it breaks off? You just touch it to the stem, hold yeah. it there for about four or five seconds, and it'll just break in a straight line on its own. I, right. That's not really cutting it. It's causing a resonance through the glass and it just breaks in a clean edge. Oh, so you don't cut right round. You just cut a, a, no, a, a nick, a nick, you basically. Just, you just hold it to the stem yeah. and it'll cut, cut on it, break on its own. Right. That hasn't been, that hasn't been sanded. That's just exactly as it came off the Dremel. Mm -hmm. As those ends are going into a piece of wood, then it doesn't doesn't matter that it's not perfect. No. So, 
Right, so, I part this off now. Yeah? A oh, question yeah. that I'm sure somebody's going to ask. Would you, there. what what finish would you put on there if you were going to use it? Plastic coat, something similar Plastins, to that? Plastic coat or... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you could use resin. Give it a painted part of with some uh, epoxy resin. Do you um, what plastic coat is? Or you could um, burn it and then use beeswax. Scorch the inside, use beeswax over after you've brushed all the carbon off, um, which is a traditional method. Sealing goblets, to be quite honest, <clears throat> most goblets nowadays are decorative. I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend using this. The glass ones that I do, they're a glass goblet with a wood stem. They're not dishwasher safe, but they can be used for drinking from. You just wash them by hand, rinse them out with warm water, dry gently. And what do you use on the stem of those, Mark? What, um, what, what on the wooden stem of the glass ones, what do you use? Uh, I've got one over here. We use Canuba wax. All right, okay. Yeah. So that's that's one of my standard. So this bit here is just a bit of oak. That's um, sanded to 240, Yorkshire gritted, sand and sealer, and then a Canuba Canuba wax stick. Just run right. over it, buffed in, done, finished. And then the glass is glued into the top with, with two-part epoxy. Okay. Did Thank you for that. Uh, Z epoxy or um, the two-part epoxy that you get from Littles. Mm -hmm. Whenever the Littles have it in, I usually go in there and buy 10 or 15 packs at a time. And they do it both. A, it's called Rexan Construction Products. Um, that's the 20 minute epoxy. They also do a five minute in a yellow handle. Whenever they're Hi, in. Kim. Oh. Hi, Kim. How are Hi, you? Hi, Kim. How are you? Welcome. Hi, Kim. You're telling us all about your tractor crash at Brown's. <laughs> Stopping you in it. Um, Roy's a boy who had a club meeting via Zoom with Gary Lowe doing an offset Satan bowl. I don't know what that well, is, but, um, but that was interesting. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, no, look at Sounds good. Right. Let's part this off then. See what happens, shall we? Yeah, let's. Drop, drop speed a little bit. Come on, it's going flat out. Now, I'm going to put one finger inside the hole. Uh, change to that one. One finger inside the goblet, like that. Because when this comes off, that's going to go flying everywhere. And then the other fingers are just holding lightly around the goblet. Yeah, we can't actually see much of that, but we, we go. Get I know, but if I do this. Yeah, that's good. It's always dodgy when you're passing towards a, a drilled hole. Now I am going to have to do something. That bit of glass I just drove in the behind. Um, because it's quite a prominent step. There. Yeah. So I think what I might have to do is put this on the O'Donnell drawers, just grip it very lightly from the inside, shape it down. Can't you know, jam it right. on what's left there? Nobody says I don't bleed for my craft. I could do a jam chuck, yeah. So that's that uh, top bit. Sorry, because. Boys, boys, corrected. 
rest of the spelling, it was Saturn as in the planet, not Satan. That makes more sense. Right. So that's the top. Now the easy bit, which will be the bottom. Just about got that distance right, Pete. It's about three or four mil. Yeah, that's what you need, but uh, you do need to. Yeah. You do need to compensate for what you're farting off. Yeah. Right. So now I'm going to use. Uh, can you let Mike back in? Yeah, hold on. Mike obviously pressed the wrong button again. Yeah. There he is. Yes, I did press the wrong button. Try again, Mike. <laughs> it's me age, you know. So this time I'm just using a step center for speed. Because I'm going to go in an hour now. So. Step center that's held in the chuck. Now this is going to be the base. What I will do is put a tenon on one end, hold it in the chuck, drill it, and then we can shape. Uh, I just popped into YouTube for you just uh, to look at the count and realize I haven't put my thumb up yet, so I've done that now. Oh, he's gone again. Mike. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm having problems here. Sorry about right, that. Mike, you know I love you, but you're being a geriatric old fool. <laughs> That's because I am a geriatric old fool. Come on. <laughs> we all never are. We never, I've never denied it. Right. So, spindle rough and gouge. Take this down around. Parting tool, create the bead, the create the tenon. How's that part done? Oh no, still got a bit of a flat. <clears throat> right, so take the step center out. It's fine. Now for this one, for the base, for the bottom of the stem, it is slightly different size. Just over 10 mil. Because of my pen making days, I've got a variety of drill bits. And I actually have a 10.4 mil drill bit, which will be perfect for this. Ten point four in metric is obviously some, something sensible in Imperial. Sixteen thirty two or something like that. I think sixteen thirty two would be a half inch. Oh whatever it is. I don't do. <laughs> don't do. <laughs> yeah. Even I realise that, Mark. Okay. I don't know, do I? I don't know. I'm young and <laughs> cool and hip. <laughs> God, excuse me. Do you know it's daft? Everybody knows I'm, I'm type 1 diabetic because I lost my pancreas. 
and I have to finger prick and test 10, 8, 10, 15 times a day. And when you finger prick, bit of blood, test it, and it stops bleeding straight away. I don't test on my thumb. And that, I got one little prick of glass in there, and it won't stop bleeding. <laughs> well, if you like a bit of blood on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, enough of that. Right, so. Just while you're not on Facebook, they probably have one of those. Um, yeah. Blurred out pictures, whatever they call it. A blurred out picture. Speed up. Change camera. Three eighths ball couch. I don't know what's going to happen. You know what happens when that control box and I'm using your lathe? Yeah, you speed it up. Turn the lathe off. Turn the lathe up and down in speed whilst I'm trying to use the skew and forget what's going on. Robert said, young, cool, hip, and crocs don't go together, Mark. Now, the nice thing about doing it this way, it's just occurred to me. You have the perfect opportunity to get the proportions right. Now, I think that stem is possibly too tall. What do you guys think? It's going to be parted off about here. Yeah. I think maybe bring that down a little bit. I would. Yeah, I'd agree. But I think that's too tall. So. Because you're doing it this way, you've now got the opportunity to get your proportions correct. Can I make a suggestion as well? You know when you bring down the base of the bowl to blend in with the glass? Yeah. What I would tend to do, and you obviously won't be able to do it on uh, today's, what I would tend to do is to glue in the stem. And then yeah. you've got um, a solid goblet, if you like, and then you can put a... Um, a cone center or a tennis ball in the goblet end. Yeah. And you've still got the base with the tenon on for the chuck. Yeah. And then you can do your refining before you um, <clears throat> part him off. Just my suggestion. That's good. Because the Donald Jaws, I don't like the idea of that because you've got to mark the wood and it's not yeah, very Yeah, you got to mark everything inside, haven't you? Yeah. I'm wondering if I, I was just wondering. Just have a look. Ooh, I might be able to. That fits in my vacuum chuck. Oh, well, there we go then. There you go. I can fit that, fit the cup of the goblet inside the vacuum chuck. I'd still do it the way Mike said. So would I, but I didn't want to upset Mark because he wants to use his vacuum chuck. <laughs> don't want to use my vacuum chuck. <laughs> yeah. Good idea though, Mike. So I think... See what that looks like. I think that's going to look better. <clears throat> so, can I be really critical? Yeah. 
and you might tell me to go and go forth and multiply, I would I'd, I would personally just slightly do one more pass and slightly increase the concave. concave? Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, I was thinking oh, something similar, but I was thinking vastly increase the concave, not slightly. Well, I didn't want to be too rude, Pete, like you. <laughs> <laughs> Robert said, I think we can hear Mike sharpening his dentures in the background. No, it's not me. <laughs> I'm sitting here like a good little boy. Well, sort of. Is that better? Yeah, just uh, a little bit more from little the bit. base. A little bit more because you, you've got a bit of a bump there. If you just go in and lift your handle there, go down and then sweep it in. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Yep. What's up? Give me yeah, a little cut line. Ruby said another idea would be to use a mortise in the bottom. That way the bottom is already done and there's no need to part off. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. I have to think yeah, a minute there, Ruby. Really. <laughs> yeah, you can do that with the small jaws on the O'Donnell, no problem. Well, Brian can't because he hasn't got O'Donnell jaws, but you know, we can. No. Yeah. Right. Hasn't Brian got a Donald Jaws? <laughs> no. Turn it down. Don't believe you. Uh, for this bit of sanding, grab the bits I've already used, I think. Uh, 120, 180, 240. For this little bit, I won't turn the extraction on. Again, when you're doing this in your own workshop, take your time. You're not under any time limit like we are. And to be fair, we're only really under our own self-imposed time limits for these demos. This is to give you an idea of something to do. And that's why you know people when I do a live, I don't take any notice of them and they go on for two and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> that's because you keep stopping and talking. Mike. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I've unfortunately got to go up the road and pick up a load of wood for an order I've just had and then I've got to pack up all my demo kit because I'm away to Kim's this weekend and then I'm going straight from there on Monday to a demo at Bridgewater Wood Turners Monday evening feel free to come along if you're in the area now I've so I'm, I'm under the just clock started doing today. lives uh, covering for Terry and it's amazing how time gets away from you. Yeah. You're doing something, you, you think you're doing it at a reasonable pace, but it's usually about half the speed you would be doing it if you weren't doing it on camera. Exactly. Because I was such a sick man yesterday, I was ill. I laid on the sofa most of the day. Can we have a big R from everybody, please? In the no, chat? don't, don't, don't feel sorry yeah, for that. A big R, a big R, please. Oh. <laughs> no. No. It wasn't even man flu. No, I don't know what it was. Proper boy, I was. It's all better now, though. Right, so. Billy Yorkshire quit. Ah, what have I forgotten? He didn't see it. I love this. Right. So, I've been to wait so if you 
If you forget to put sand in sealer on, it's not a problem. You just put two applications of Yorkshire grit. Yep. Yep. So you go through or, the same process. <coughs> or you just write a little note on your tin like I do and Brian does now. Yeah, but see, I won't admit that I'm that old and forgetful yet. Who are you? What? Who? Hey, what? Where are we? <laughs> Always a voice said, Was it a hangover, Mark? I don't no, know if it was a hangover wasn't. as such, but it was a result of a, a party and weekend. No, it wasn't. Party okay, and I, weekend. I thought well, it was a gig. Um, Booze, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. it was a bit like that. It was, my, it was actually Coca-Cola, insulin, and rock and roll. I <laughs> do yeah. I must try this insulin. I'm trying it before. You see, I find that Coca-Cola is dangerous stuff. It's only safe it's to It was Diet off. Coke. Yeah, that's even worse. Right, yeah, I so... Drink, I, I drink gallons of that. Right, go on. Because I was an idiot and forgot to put <laughs> sand in the on, I'll do a second coat of Yorkshire grit. Turn the lead back down. 350. Amy's got the food. She deserves an R. Oh. Oh. So work that in. Let it do its job. Once it's done its job, clean piece of paper, speed the lathe up, buff off the excess. Now, because I forgot to put the sealer on, I said two voice, applications. Voice, 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 his nose is landed on the keyboard. <clears throat> that does the same job as if I put sand and sealer on it first. Um, paper towel. Kidney, folks. One thing worth noting, you really don't want any finishes on that wood inside the mortise. No. It can be worth um, just plugging that with something when you're doing the finishing. I was going to say you could put some masking tape in there, but Mike's on, so I can't say that. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you can say it, I just can't use it. <laughs> I could just dream of using masking tape in public. So don't go from the bottom up to the top. Start at the top. Buff the wax down. So you don't drag any of the wax up and into that hole. Brian Weatherwise said, would it be acceptable for hashtag challenge to use a glass bowl and base with a wooden stem? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's your own interpretation and... and how you, how you cut it is up to you. And in fact, the more different ideas that end up in that video that's, that you've put together, the more you'll inspire other people with different... That's the glass bowl version with the wooden stem. And you could do a wooden bowl, wooden stem with a glass base if you wanted to. That would probably look quite nice as well. Dare I say, even resin would be acceptable. God. <gasps> but Shock as long as it's turned by somebody right. else and it's not turned in my workshop. Yeah. Second now. Cut this off. Undercut uh, slightly. Timothy CF turning said, so "Can a goblet have a lid and finial?" Yes. That's what he's made. Yes, I have actually done that for a wedding chalice so that they could put bits of confetti and odds and ends of reminders of the day. I stick the lid on and shove it on a shelf. A little bit of um, sick so as that, well. <laughs> that little bit in the centre can be sanded away with a sanding arbor held in your chuck. Just apply gentle pressure and sand, finish the bottom, then finish the bottom the same way as you would the top. 
And if I change camera to this one. So what we've got then is goblet base with a glass stem. And a wooden top. Now, obviously, they need to be glued in. This I will finish in a number of different ways. Mike's way, which is probably the best way, or I can, I can cheat. In this <laughs> or you could use your vacuum shirt. <laughs> well called, sir. You can well throw, called, throw it on the floor and make another one. No, I had to <laughs> it on the, yeah. add it on the thing on the lathe. Good God, man. He just broke the stem. No, no he didn't. Stems oh. See, some, it's, it's it's because I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Mike, Mike Walter syndrome. <laughs> so there'll be pictures of this finished, and I'll send the pictures to Steve by email this time. But I had me telling off last time. It's got to be so these, got to be uh, SK Crafts SK at Crafts bt, internet at bt internet com. Com. Um, and then that'll be included in the hashtag week next time he does the video. So there you go. That's three part goblet with a glass stem. That's lovely. And it will be when it's finished. No, yeah. it was my Excellent. lucky day, Hodge, because I dropped it three times and it never broke. <laughs> Robert, it's not your lucky day, Mark. I wouldn't sit in any chairs. No. Still. Bit of a scar that day. So anyway, that's a different way of going about the couplet challenge. JP's just come in, just as I'm finishing. Hey JP. Hi oh, JP. JP. So there you oh, go. Yeah. Three P cut three piece couplet. Wooden stem. Uh, wooden base, glass stem, wooden cup. That needs to be glued together. The top needs this bit here, the transition. Just needs to be finished. I think you could probably, when you're turning that mm -hmm. before yes, you pull it off, maybe be a little bit braver, a bit more brave than I was, but I didn't want to go through. Uh, I think it needs a bit, a bit more planning on how that cup and stem are going to join each other. Hmm. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you can work, if you can work out a way of getting it virtually there without uh, without turning around. Know, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Avoid the turning round portion as much as you can, because obviously not everyone has vacuum jugs or, but I do think like Mike said, just explain the way you said again, Mike. Well, basically assemble the goblet, allow it to um, go off properly. Um, don't part off. So then you've got the tenon on the base and then just put it back in and support the cup of the goblet with either whatever, you know, um, tennis ball or cone center, whatever. So you've got stability and then you can refine the curvature into the glass on both actually on the, um, on the, on the base and indeed the cup. Thank you, Stephen. <coughs> Stephen Gordon's in. Yeah. A really good demo though, Mark. Excellent. Very inspiring. Thank you. Shame you didn't colour it, but you know, there you go. I don't think Can't you can. That, that's too pretty a piece of wood to colour. No, you don't yeah. colour that, would you? I don't think so. No. I mean, I, I honestly don't know what the wood is. I think it's a Digbo or a Roco or something like that. I think it's a bit light for a Roco, but it, it could be a Digbo. I think it's a Digbo. Yeah, could be. Yeah. There you go. Anyway, the glass stem is a byproduct of another job that Mark does regularly. Yeah, I do these. I wholesale these. I make 25 to 50 a month. Um, just a wine glass with the base cut off. And That's I'm just to keep his. I'm left That's with the base and stem. Shut up, you fool. The 50 a month is just to keep him and Kim in glasses. Oh, yes. <laughs> 50 a month, go to a shop. But Kim boys, because no, you need it's them. not even down break, in the southwest. Because you, you break a lot. Don't break a lot. What do you like? Right. Thank you, Pete. You're welcome. Cheers, everyone. Say, thank you, Mike. Been a great pleasure. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, thank you, honestly. Thank you both for your help. Thank you, everybody, mm -hmm. for coming in. Um, Thursday night tonight's probably Scott. 
Friday lunchtime will be Wayne. Friday night, SK Crafts. Saturday afternoon will be Jamie with Jake. Saturday afternoon, Cartoons. And then Saturday night will be uh, Wayne again, Saturday night, Mint. Sunday lunchtime will be Steve and Nikki. And then the usual uh, premiere Sunday night will be Wayne Wood Turner and JP Woodwork. And then we're back into Monday, which will be Pete. Yeah. And Brian, if he's finished tractoring. So that's it for me. Thank you very so much. Take care, everybody. Thanks for coming in. See you soon. Cheers, all the best, all. Bye-bye.